one of the semifinals as champion select has begun and my big question is exactly how locked up are origins bands we there are some red side teams who will put all the bands themselves the band mordekaiser and gangplank and there are some that are happy to share the burden with the blue side team and, and leave it for the very end. We yeah. see that GP actually banned by SKT here. SKT's ban pattern usually goes as follows on blue side. They ban one of the OPs, which is considered Gangplank or Mordekaiser. Yep. They have seven Ga Mordekaiser bans this entire tournament already, the most out of any team. And then they target ban a certain player twice. So usually you would see in this trend, it would be support ban coming out third to try and pinch that champion pool. Yeah, this is actually a little wrinkle here in the second ban being Gangplank. I was thinking that it was going to be Mordekaiser because they've done that so often. Uh, but they do as well have three Gangplank bans. And this is already interesting from Origin because every single blue side game, oh. SKT has first picked the jungler. That jungler's yeah. always ended up being Elise. But Origin have already pushed upon themselves two jungle bans. And they either have to lock up... Actually, no, they're not going to ban Mordekaiser themselves, so SKT actually giving breathing room to Origin, who are banning Lulu off there. That could be at least Sin pick here uh, instantly off the bat from, from Benki. It would be weird. Though. I don't, yeah, I don't feel the need since both Elise and Rek'Sai are banned out now. And Gragas, of course, is globally banned uh, to early pick that jungler there for SKT. Bang has been one of the most feared Kalista in, Kalistas in the entire world. Yeah. It was a huge talking point at MSI, and he proved his point there. Here we go, we see the next priority champions coming across there. The Alistair that we thought might go to Wolf, taken away as quickly as possible by Mithy. Of course, the Callista stolen away by Marin. I think it's a good luck in here. Both these champions take a lot of power away from SKT because they're so smart at playing this split push style. If you add an invisible jungler in between that in the mid game, it's almost impossible to play against a team of SKT1's caliber like with an Evelyn. Also, again, the Alistair is a clear steal away from Wolf. See what's next up on the docket there. Bangi already locks in the Jarvan. Of course, we have seen him play top as well as in the jungle. The Shen also could be a top laner or a support. The Shen pick I actually really like, even though uh, we haven't seen it from Wolf, because we talked about champions that can move across the map really quickly are going to be very important in this matchup. It's going to be all about multiple points of map pressure. Shen adds that no matter if he's in a support role or from the top lane role, because if he's in the support role, then he can actually use level 6 teleport up to the top lane and try and snowball Marin, who's been the king for SKT. Yeah, and it definitely suits Wolf's playstyle in the mid game. What he does, he just goes into lane that is the weakest matchup in terms of lane control and pushing, and he tries to amend that. Now with Shen, not only can he be in that lane to fix that with their deficit or just pressure deficit. He can also ulti to either side lane if he chooses to be in the mid lane or just anywhere on the map. So much pressure coming out for that split push style here for SKT D1. So Origin to lock in the next couple of champions here. Xpeke not actually going to yet lock in that victor. And there we go. It's going to be the champion for him. So it's going to leave SKT to, as usual, last pick in their mid lane. This cannon, of course, can be a flex pick. Niels may have picked it up from Reckless in the last couple of weeks or it could still go to Soaz. And Origin will look for matchups before flexing that around. SKT right now, I'm really curious what they want to combo with Jarvan. They already have one champion who can create terrain on the team. Hovering over... Two uh, more. <laughs> yeah, Nivia. Yeah, exactly. Two more champions. They could just create their own battlefield. Try and work with here. Technically, Jarvan can end up being top Tech, least it could be a, yeah. could be a solo lane. Could even be mid. It's not really an easy hoon. Could also just be an entirely different play style. SKT may just want to play a group team fight style because we keep talking about split push, split push, split push. But for all we know, they may just want to group up early and just keep going for those objectives because they're so fantastic sure. at securing a lot of these dragons too, as opposed to a lot of other teams. And on Origin side, they do technically also have that cannon as flex as well. So not giving away too much there for the top lane matchup. This lineup looks like the lineup for SKT right here. The Azir and Fiora. Marin has been an absolutely immaculate Fiora player so far this World Championship. We mentioned it before, Easy, who known for his Azir, maybe the very best in the world, which means it is Jungle Jarvan, it is Support Shen, and now Origin flex the lineup. Yeah, this does make the cannon a lot more valuable in the top lane. A pretty good matchup right there, keeping your distance against the Fiora, always to stun her if she comes at you. You can prevent her from proccing that ultimate, definitely so. Uh, with your own, and then it puts Niels in an 80 carry heavy position though, because you're running double AP with very little peel. Especially good pick with an Evelyn jungle. If Kennen gets jungle help against Fiora, it's Fiora, somebody has to bail Fiora out, or she gets relegated to the jungle. If there's any jungle intervention there and Kennen gets a leg up, it's very, very oppressive. And keep in mind that if you're in a lane swap as well, it's not exactly easy for Fiora to get denied farm early on. Kennen, of course, plenty of utility on the kit, can do something while starved. Origin to make their last choice for what looks like AD carry. 
Yeah, SKT in the last six games have sent their bot lane bot every single time and Mar to the top lane. So lane swap is actually not that likely. So maybe if Origin can use this information, they can find the favorable lanes. The SKT lineup, though, looking really well-rounded to me. They have multiple split push options. They've got late game secured with Azir, and they have Kalista to carry them through mid. So yep. very versatile setup here from SKT. Coming into a game one of a best of five, this is the type of lineup that you are looking for. You know, kind of be able to defend against any strategy. And yeah, early push in the mid lane to Azir, just spamming those soldiers down. Victor needs a little bit of time before he can really start challenging that wave with the E. Need a couple of upgrades there on that spell. So early push from Easy, who maybe Bengi can help Marin in the top lane to help that matchup. And then Galista Shen should do fine in, into almost any matchup, especially sure. against melee support. So SKT setting up for their signature style already. And I want to see what happens then to Amazing here in the jungle. If Evelyn doesn't get a lot of help, that champion does get low while clearing and camps and whatnot, and you talk about Easy Hoon pushing up, the dueling looking good, Bangi can be very aggressive, and jumping into that Origin jungle and pushing down Amazing certainly a possibility here for SKT. Yeah, I actually think that SKT may look for the lane swap here. Uh, you know, maybe trying to avoid not yep. only the Fiora Cannon, but also the Callista plus Shen. Alright, well we'll see what these matchups end up being. Brussels is here to cheer on their favorite teams, you guys at home are always part of the conversation as well. Guys, let us know who it's going to be. Tweet at Lolly Sports, hashtag SKT, when if you go with the analyst desk, or hashtag OG, when if you go with the home crowd. But we are here to find out which of these two teams will send a player to their second World Championship final, the chance at their second World Championship. And here we go, game one of the semifinals, South Korea's SK Telecom T1 versus Europe's Origin. And here we go. All right. Now that we get the scenic route here with those banners. Take notes, guys. It's no, no team has gotten to see that close into SKT's base the entire time here at Worlds. <laughs> they have not even given up a tier two turret. See if uh, Origin can take one from them. All right. Looks like a bit of an invade here from SKT, forcing out Soas. And this is different because usually the one point of weakness in any SKT game start has been the top left side of the map, where then Bengi and Marin would start dual jungling without a ward. SKT have been incredibly greedy with their trinket usage early. But right now, it does look like Kobe was on the money with his lane swap call. They have gotten a little bit of an early advantage there as well, forcing Soas to level up Lightning Rush no matter where you start. It's going to make it a little bit more difficult. Not a happy place for him, but meanwhile, Peke and Easy Hoon have actually already done battle. Easy Hoon is missing some health, so Peke has dealt 100% of the damage in this game. Beautiful start. <laughs> Good job, Free. Former world champion. <laughs> Not only does it work well in terms of matchups, getting Marin out of that sticky cannon situation, it also just doesn't really help Evelyn at all being in a lane swap. She really wants standard lanes to be unpredictable and, and go multiple directions and surprise people. Right now, if you're locked into a lane swap, you do a jungling for a very long time. The map is nicely split in half. So as a jungler, I'm sure you know more about that, Kobe. I do think it's also a good uh, split start here from SKT. They start in two quadrants at the same time. A lot of vision down there. <clears throat> Making sure that Origin are not starting on that side. Has Shen leveled up the taunt yet? Yeah, he has taunt already. He wants to push into Peke, but with the wave already pushing, there's nothing that Easy Hoon can do here, so nothing much done. He keeps his team safe. Origin did start aggressively in the bottom jungle. Bangi and Marin will react and perform similarly. I mean, it looks like we're just head on on track for just the EU style lane swap where both teams do a double quad and clear, send three people top, jungler keeps jungling, and the wave gets bounced towards their top laner. Just need to see if SKT don't make the mistake they did earlier in one of the HQ games where they left the tower alive for a very short period. Yeah. Also, because of that sort of split start that I was actually complimenting from SKT, they're behind. Uh, they actually were not rewarded for the attempt at a mid lane gank and a mid lane pressure, and that means that Origin are. Uh, a few seconds ahead here on the early tower take, a bit quicker in the jungle. They've sent Amazing back to their own quadrant as well, which is very safe for him to farm. So they can uh, take down this turret while Amazing continues to get experience. To make up some of that turret damage though, you're going to see that SKT have brought all four of those players to the top side as Bengi just finishes off the Krugs. 
Seas. He does not need to be part of this fight at all, and it will be the three-man take, but I don't believe this will be stopped by anyone, so it should be an equivalent turret trade. Yeah, you just gotta see what they do in phase two of the lane swap. A little adaptation here from Origin. The gold does not go to Soas. It does yeah. become a bounce here by Niels. He has killed E, so he can't freeze this wave. But usually what you see is the next step in his evolution. Instead of freezing this for extended periods of time, you just push it back towards the people that come to defend it, so... Yeah, this does signal to me, though, that they want to try and continue knocking down all the outer turrets with Tristana, get her rotating around, uh, and keep up this early sort of map control lead that they do have. Soaz is going to be the obvious one that will take a hit because of this strategy. Marin just got the local gold all to himself for that turret. Yeah, they're just going to move their bot lane to the top lane, force Marin to oh, walk and teleport bot too because they're going... They're basically doing a fake out right here. They're saying, okay, we have Soaz here, come gank us, we have an invisible Evelyn, then the bot lane will show up. And they move away from that play all of a sudden because Niels, he ran mid and bottom all of a sudden. So this is something we see way too often from Origin. They go in for a play, hesitate, and switch it up. Well, also, it, I mean, Evelyn's invisible, but Alistar is not. And Mithy was trailing and walked over a ward. So, uh, Marn not going to take that bait. It is worth seeing the lane assignments, though. So Origin of Senko Duel Lane back down to the bottom sides. Not, they're not content to continue trading turrets. This is, I think, why they gave solo gold to Niels. He got a pickaxe plus a potion on his recall versus the long sword of Bang. So item-wise, Origin's Duel Lane is ahead. They were probably just trying to secure the matchup. If they send four top, they can keep Niels there. If the matchup ends up being the bot lane, send Soaz bot with teleport to find Marin. If it is not there, Niels just pass back to the bot lane, and Soaz can stay top with his teleport. So it looks like Origins just wanted to find that 1v1 Ken Fiora matchup. And let me touch on both junglers here, because both junglers have only been setting up for counter ganks here. Both junglers have just been waiting for the first move of the other team. Amazing trailing top because they thought that Soaz would be the target since he was their weak member. Meanwhile, SKT, uh, they were trailing behind Bang there because that's the extended lane. That's where they did not have a turret. And you would expect the obvious move from an Evelyn who is invisible to go attack uh, the SKT members that are in the long lane, try and chase them out and get one of those cheap uh, early kills. Neither team going for those riskier early plays though and the counters just sort of nullify each other. So right now, with the less risks happening, you can see the early recall from Bang. He needed the Vamp Tether for the lane to even be acceptable. So a small lead for Origin, thanks to the dual lane advantage, temporary though it may be. Meanwhile, of course, Marin is winning the top lane. With the pink ward already down, Bangi is unseen coming in here. So S has been playing really, really safe, though. And since he is Kennen, he can see us from range. Plus, he has his own lightning rush. We know he leveled it up early. Also has a ward. Does get hit, though. He slowed. And he's missing a turret. So here comes Bangi is going to flash for the slow, which means Soaz has to burn it preemptively, and he guesses right. Bangi goes the wrong way. Soaz goes back in on the Marin, and the stun is still available. The Q comes in, gets some damage down, but where's his team going to be? There's no one around right now. He's still running away through the wards. Pops Summoner Teleport, and oh! there first. Soaz tries to juke out both members with his awkward flash, the angle that you would not expect him to go. He only got one member tricked there, and Marin actually stayed and uh, intelligently held on to his flash, but Soaz goes for the teleport instantly inside the brush, and it just barely pays off. Half a second too short there for Bengi with the knockup. But this was a paid straight out of SKT's playbook. Whenever towers go down, they really want to get Bengi to gank the tower that has that has gone down in the tier one one. So you can get behind the rubble. People usually feel safe in that point of the lane, but, but then they forget to realize that their tower is gone behind them. Even if you have a gap closer like Cannon, and that's exactly beautifully played what around by Bengi with SKT the flash W. were protecting themselves against on the other side of the map. So. They were expecting Origin to do a very similar thing. So as though, now he has no summoners. He's gonna have to be extra careful here. A little bit of extra vision has been placed defensively for them, uh, for Origin. They've also got the red buff quadrant of SKT warded up as well. So they'll see the second take of that buff and Bengi's whereabouts. Yeah, but that gank failing and just not amounting to a kill just puts Origin in such a comfortable position. Not only do they get to see where Bengi was, he had to blow his flash, they traded that for Cosmap Vision in the jungle, and now they're in control of the next move. They're, they're first to play. Also, I would be looking at the bottom lane for some action here from Origin. Because they have the red quadrant warded up, they have to assume that Bengi is on the top side of the map, and the Tristana-Alistar combo uh, does have that 
early lead. Soaz here might be the next target, though. It's a bit of a payment, though. Soaz has been freezing this lane for a long time, and you're right, he is flashless, so this could be a target of opportunity, but he's already awarded for himself. He saw Marin come through. He'll see if Bangi comes in as well. Amazing, sussing out the pathing of his opponents, going for the exact same buffs that just happened, and now Marin has to farm in a lane that's overextended. Mithy is 75% away from level six, by the way, so that dive is not close. Uh, to being pulled off without extra vision of all SKT members. But of course, out of turret's gone, so Bang has to play super far back. Niels is obliging by pushing at the very least, but it does unlock amazing for some of these lanes. You can see how far back Wolf has to play. The dive could go mid as well yep. once that Alistar hits that level six. Azir actually is extremely vulnerable to it. The other side of that coin is though, if Soas keeps the wave frozen in front of his tower and is comfortable playing on the defense of his tower, that frees up potentially Marn and Bangi roaming mid to dive expect it. If that happens and mid-tier 1 falls, then suddenly the map is in control of SKT. So, Origin have to be careful a little bit, and that's maybe why we see Amazing come out oh, here. They He's stop Marin. Him. But of course, Marin He'll be able to get away. Will they find the pink ward, though? Amazing needs to get something for his trip up top. It looks like he did not go into that brush, but he saw Marin move, so he'll he knows. figure it out. Yep. Yes, there must be a pink ward in here, and he will take it down. Yeah, will all that Origin if they want a hard push and force Marin's teleport without missing a bunch of waves? So there's a chance for that play here. But either way, we are at a 600 gold lead for Origin as we get to the 10 minute mark. This is pretty much unlike any of the stats we would have seen coming into this game, but kind of down the line for literally every player, you have a farm advantage for Origin. Yeah, well, 200 of that gold is on Amazing purely because he's been farming harder as bangy has been trying to camp for Marin and so has wasted a lot of his time. The rest of that gold is mostly on Tristana, on Niels, the champion that they want to knock down the rest of the outer turrets with. Look for that all-in. Alistar Tristana, very dangerous in the all-in combo, especially if there's an invisible jungler there. Yeah. Yeah, just two signature moves in this early game so far. The one flash out play to teleport from Soa staying alive, because that counteracted one proactive move. And then the little cheeky move where they made sure that Soa was matched up, up against Marin and Neil's path of down because they didn't really lose anything. So Origin with two minor outplays on the map, but that only leaves them marginally ahead. By the way, Soa's teleport is back up, so they were unable to punish him so far uh, for the early use of that summoner spell. Plus, remember, Peke did use his teleport mid. So SKT do have the 2 to 1 teleport advantage. Here comes finally that aggression down bottom, though. There's no SKT jungler around. Amazing with theoretically be alone doing this, but SKT constantly playing very far back. Now a fight in the top side. So as Flash still on cooldown. Bangi pop will stun Marin, will not Don't. stun Bangi. So as unwilling to flash, unable to get away. First blood to Marin, and SKT strike back. SKT have now taken first blood in nine out of their 10 games. They are the kings of fighting those first blood. If at first you don't succeed, well, you come back once he just has no way out. So us again, overextends in that lane. No tower to back him up, no jungler to back him up. And yeah, well played by SKT. Yeah, keeping track of that flash timer going to make sure they get there right before it comes back off of cooldown. So as not having it available gets punished. It's a good thing. SKT able to now pull a 500 gold lead for the team as they kill the minion wave left over on the map. Amazing, still unable to find his mark in this game. Rune Glaive is done, so he's got the jungle enchant for himself. Whoa. Deals plenty of damage. Okay, Rip. he did get the Raptor. Yeah, risky early smite there. But does get it as well as the ward. Down bottom now. They still haven't made a move, and there's a pink ward that will see him coming in. Yeah, SKT have done a good job of not getting any deep force in the lanes. Hang on, Easy Hoon. Whoa, big move there. Nice flash gets away from Emperor's Divide. Easy Hoon forced to use his as well to not get traded back on. Peke with a well respected move. Now a bot lane fight. Good. Rocket jump by Niels. Buffers it against the Callista ulti. Gets away. Yeah, I don't know about being forced to use it in the mid lane there. Easy. I think the E cooldown was close enough to being back there. Very scared. He didn't see the laser come out first. Just use it. Uh oh, Marin, he's got the ulti, pops it. So I was gonna be in a bad way. He does have flash. And it's gonna be a flash fall. There's only one vital left, and Marin can't quite reach it, but he gets the slow. Oh. One hit of kill! Oh. Oh. It's not for Soaz, but it's enough to get Marin the kill anyway. 2-0 to the SKT top laner. Amazing, still trying to make something work out bottom, but Bangi is here, giving even better than he's getting. And Mithy's ult's already down, a 3 oh, man knock oh. Beautiful, gets one back from Alistair, but Mithy's already dead. Wolf survives, the chase, Niels gets one back. It's already four to one SKT, though, this game is falling apart. Well, 
Bangi takes a couple of shots, does miss the knockup. Niels really wants this kill, nearly gets it. Bang almost dies as well. If anyone would show up, it's a sure double kill, but Soaz is missing Flash. He's almost in range for the Q. Bang is gonna get taken down. Two to four now, Origin clawing back in. Easy Hoon is still here. Soaz does have to be careful. All right, he's not gonna go any deeper. Now no, it, is, no flash. it is only a few hundred gold lead for SKT, even with uh, the extra two kills. What worries me is though that all these plays seem to be initiated by SKT, so the gank top. So I had to outplay this play bottom. He had to teleport and save that. Easy Hoon was roaming proactively. And SKT, they want to they wanna get stuff done. And Origin, they're just fine, you know, sitting back playing that game solely, but just against a team that is as creative as SKT. SK Telecom, it's a really risky strategy to do that. I mean, the Mar and Fiora pick that we highlighted, obviously very important to SKT, and Bengi camping up there for a large portion of the early game. Mar able to make that pay off. This Dragon, though, gonna go over to OG without any vision there from SKT. Well deserved. Proper recall timing. Niels has plenty of attack damage, and Bang looks like he just went back to the Blade of the Ruined King. Another team is mid already. Azir was getting blue buff, so he's even shot out of his lane. Up. He may have to ulti here. Doesn't matter what happens. Origin up now two turrets to one. They got the first dragon as well. A 400 gold lead. Origin is really good at, at getting members to collapse in from different lanes. Hang on, Marin. Gotta be careful. Overextended. You know, he can jump over the wall. So is it above him, though. Rocket jump lands for the slow. Marin will will repost the stun and actually pulverize Miss, but it doesn't matter. Soaz gets his second kill of the game. So he would have had to jump over the thin part of the Baron Wall when he first saw uh, Tristana there. If you go up further, that section of the Baron Wall is too thick to jump over, and he had no option at that point. Origin get a pick off here, and it's going to be a tower trade, it looks like. Bang is all alone down bottom, but Origin continue to push top, so... Yeah, it'll be a one for one, and the score will be three to two here. Origin of more than enough members here. I think it's nice for SKT, the fact that Kalista oh, can knock it to it down. And Banky will look for a play. Peke does not have flash. Shenalty's in as well, and the Victor W will land a bit of a stun, but here comes the taunt, here comes the Azir damage, and that's a great kill in the mid lane for SK Telecom. The turrets will be traded. Won't take long for Bang here, and we can see the game still very close. Yeah, that's a big kill. You lose your mid mid lane wave clear, and all the map control, go even dive. if they dive this, the they risk it. up. Marin has no flash, no ult. He can look for the repost. There's going to be a big chunk of damage, and Niels dunks better than Darius could ever hope to. These are the dangers we talk about, since we have to keep up pressure on multiple points of the map. SKT are showing all of their members on the map. They used three people mid, and Bang still bottom. That meant that once Marin showed they knew it was a free dive. But it's still a turret trade. That mid lane kill let Easy Hoon push one thing down. Okay, a tier two is worth more than a tier one, but it's still tit for tat every single time. Yeah, Except Marin. the extra kill here. Overextending here. That should never happen. You should play faster on this side because not only does he die here, this gives Origin a tier two tower, something that nobody has ever done in this tournament so far against SK Telecom. This is the first tier two tower that has fallen on their side. That's why I really like that vision toggle by the spectator right there, by the way, because you could see Marn had no idea that Origin were still there, and it was about the amount of information that each team is giving up in this game. SKT like to play a little bit risky in that they push all waves yep. at the same time. So they're constantly giving information on all of their champions, whereas Origin were just outside the fog of war there. You could see in the toggle, and they surprise Marin. They make him pay for that slightly aggressive uh, or greedy move going for the extra minion wave. Yeah. Both teams trying to contest the Dragon area, and usually, if you watch these teams play so far in World Championship, again, very focused on pushing all lanes. That means the majority of the deaths in the early to mid game are people getting caught out, getting too greedy to push that wave. We distinctly remember Bangi in mid lane one time getting caught out, Bang getting hooked twice by a Thresh when trying to push out these waves, and Origin are using the vision and SKT's greed against them right now and punishing. And I expect there to be more of these types of picks without seeing the Tom Kench and the Thresh in this game. These are kill supports. These are supports that revolve around making the picks, not protecting against them too much. Wolf actually even offensively using the Stand United. Not trying to save someone, yep. he's trying to change the numbers, go for that offensive move, gain ground. This is how SKT snowball. They play so sort of greedily and, ri and risky, they try and push so many things at once. And meanwhile, pushing into the top lane though, Marin very overextended, but he's got Banky just behind him. This will not be a kill picked up by Origin. 
All is well, and Kobe, as you were talking about playing aggressively, Mithy's even gone for his second item as distortion boots on his upgraded boots mobility. He wants to hit these flash pulverizes all the time. And I think this is the correct play to, the way to play because you have a high chance of gaining incremental leads this way at a, at a fairly low cost, um, but we do see it punished right there. And you have to work around the large cooldown. The cooldown we just saw, Marin burn his flash, that's something that you paid for the extra minion waves, the extra danger of pushing that far with all three waves. Now that they don't have it, he can't afford to make that same sort of risky play. Uh, the initial action has died down a little bit, and we had some action, but overall still 9 kills in 18 minutes. The thing you really want to watch right now is the minimap. Whenever members come out of the base, SKT always assign their members so far in this tournament to the right lanes immediately. Whereas Origin, they will hesitate. They will send Niels mid to help Expeke. Turns out he didn't really need that help. Niels goes bottom. So as helps Expeke, then gets pushed to the side lane. And that way, Origin farm less in 15 minutes to 30 CS overall on the map because they lose some ways here that, as opposed to SKT, who seem to never hesitate, especially Wolf. He's always there to help a poor matchup. I, I think that's a really good point, and we were talking with uh, some of the guys on how the origin shot calling goes. All of them have input, and all these guys add, you know, information and what the ideas of where to go, um, but they don't have that instant reaction of one shot caller that's leading the entire way and a definitive route for them leaving. So that's why you see these small moments of hesitation. Yeah, we just saw it right there. Five members to the mid lane, they're talking who goes where, then they fan out to the side lanes. It doesn't really lose them too much, but it does indicate that this may be true. The thing is, though, it's a really crucial timing right now for Origin. Double item Tristana is done, and Dragon's coming up in 15 seconds. Callista cannot match this recall timing. Riley's also done for Peke. He's got a bunch of big items. This is a power spike for Origin if they can contest this dragon properly. It's actually an interesting first buy there for Peke, considering I would think that the Evelyn would also go Rylai's. They just want control in these team fights around these objectives, because if Soas can get a flank off and the remaining parts of Origin because just hard collapse in these fights. Good dodge by Amazing. Something. Gets away from the knockup. Callista ult also pops. We'll look for Mithy here. Trade of ulti knocks in Wolf. He can no longer be saved. There's the headbutt in a Tristana. Wolf cannot survive. Going that out. will still kill him. A Mithy is going to push forward. So will Neil. So as is in. Pops the ult. Lands a stun on a bangy. The collapse is there. The Chaos Storm won't reach. Whoa. But Amazing goes in. Easy room to turn it back around. The turret will get the kill. It's a two for one in favor of Origin, and they've got control. Could have sworn he did that because he wanted the W reset so he could speed out, but didn't see the reactivation there. I might look at that replay. Okay, forgot he got hit by Marin, the Q for the slow. And Marin, Marin yes, sir. Oh. gets top lane tier 2. That turret goes down. Or you do not collapse in cap plays for a dragon. So it's a kill for a turret kill. Yeah, Marin had teleport, so he could have joined, but SKT generally are really good at reading when to concede fights, but then when to re-engage, even though they have a numbers disadvantage very often in these fights. So Marin wow. pushes up top, forces Soas to react, and they end up getting the dragon anyways. Mostly because let's face it, that was an incredibly greedy flash from Amazing. You should not be flashing under a tier two when the guy is already at 10%. Absolutely agree. So an overstep by Amazing, one of the first major mistakes we've seen now from Origin. SKT react beautifully, Shenel teleport, go back down to the dragon, push him off, even the blue buff afterwards, and it's huge. Yeah, sometimes too busy asking if you can. Yeah, <laughs> you were so preoccupied with whether you could that you never, you know, exactly. ask yourself. Ask if I should. You know, he could go get that kill, but the amount of time and the resources that it takes to go get that kill, uh, you're not worth you know, giving up the objective control around the dragon. SKT can get the turret and they get this dragon. Good sidestep here though, but amazing. Forges two ulties, Mithy turns it around. Already used ulti, so he wants to turn that into aggressive play. Shen support, not strong enough just now. Niels jumps, then dies. Jumps again, so trampoline here from Niels Soas coming in. And at this point, when the jungle is chunk low and your objective is the dragon, you turn around. Let's see here. What does stop the second double? Oh, he did activate it, and he you're did. right. The There's soldier the hits the Q just on the way out. So unfortunate stuff there for Origin and a bit of a misplay. So the game is back to tied. One dragon each, same kills, same turrets. Farm is plus or minus 15 down the board. And Origin go for the rush play. Teleport and Shenalty both down. Oh, this dragon will die pretty fast. SKT knows. They're coming. But it's way too late for them. Gravity feels in the way. Wolf won't be there. Dragon doesn't matter. Baron's in. They're 23 minutes in. They're all out safe, too. They were able to get off Baron empowered recalls and defend all waves here. Origin can come straight from the fountain. They didn't lose anything there with that call. What a comeback play. All the teleports being used by SKT to get Dragon 
and classic <laughs> X-Bank and so classic and Europe. Not, classic right. EU, they're able to get the Baron in trade. I thought this was going to be a clean 3-0, but Origin, not only did they dodge these early ganks from Bengi, they're the first team to get a tier 2 tower against SKT. They're the first team to, to get... lead at 20 minutes against SKT, and they're the first team to get a Baron against SKT. And what a Baron it was so early in the game, clearly not yeah, not ready for those fanatic S type of Barons that we see so often in the EU LCS. You have little faith, Crepo, I was telling you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not over yet, though. This is still an incredibly close game. Yes, Origin do have the Baron buff, and they have a strong siege right now, but Marn looking to flank. There are plenty of deep wards here from SKT as well. So what kind of play can be made? Marin does have ult, he does have flash. He can get to his target. Yes, I think that SKT might just opt to try and wave clear here. So as has Zonius, he can peel. So can Alistair. Mithy has ult, flash, everything he needs. There is some poke coming through. Amazing is going for the flank play. Gets rid of a ward. Now he won't be spotted next time around. There's only one pink ward left in the SKT inventory. And mid lane 2-2 will go down. Niels is safe enough. He can turn it back. There we go. Turret goes down. Low health, though. Vamp Scepter is in. He can heal a bit. Now look at Martin immediately peeling off. This is generally what he likes doing. Leaving his team as four to defend or either siege. Peel off and start working on those side lanes. But Origin, they have a very group heavy strategy this game and they don't care about your side lanes because they're looking to siege. recalling right now though. You mentioned SKT in the right place at the right time, but Martin walks top lane only to recall right away. No teleport. Bot lane already getting hit here. He's got home guards though. You can walk fast, but that tourist Ooh. loses half its health and Wolf and Bang getting chunked as well by Victor. Now Marin's in the fight, but this turret's at half. SKT make the wrong choice to even defend. They just tried to five-man defend mid, got it pushed down without being able to do anything, and make the same choice. Instead of keeping Marin pushing up top and trying to gain at least a little bit of map pressure back, we're seeing these very, very slight mistakes from SKT this game, and Origin are pulling it out beautifully. Yeah, props to Origin for making SKT dance to their tune. This is one of the few games where an enemy team is actually controlling the pace of the game, telling SKT, no, you can't do that. You can't get away with pushing, pushing top lane because we will take your tier two tower in the bottom end. Origin, fantastic map play and completely unexpected if you if you looked at how we led up to the series. As they said, they are not afraid of SKT. And I don't know about completely unexpected. Origin have done the sneaky Baron before. Yeah, you later be, in the game. Yeah, you, well, you have to be, it just goes to show you have to be so careful against this team to leave at least one ward around the Baron area post 20, actually just post 20 minutes flat. Yeah, <laughs> that period. Once it spawns. SKT had two pink wards in that area that were up for pretty much the entirety of the game. So they were so comfortable with this vision. They were so comfortable playing and forcing teams to play 1v1 against them too. That no team really has been in the position to go for that Baron. Incredibly smart read in, in terms of gameplay and honestly impressed by what Origins bringing here on European soil. <laughs> so a 3,000 gold lead on European soil. Origin defying everyone but the online predictions there. We have like a 75% Twitter vote, so you guys know more than all of us analysts so far. Of course, it is still anybody's game. Of course, it's still close. I was arguing against Kripo saying they would win a game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now he comes out of the shadows. <laughs> Told you they were going to take a game, Kripo. Oh, man. Well... The third dragon of the game spawns in 40 seconds. It's one apiece right now, so all it means is turret damage for either side. Also, fun fact, Krepo made a bet that if Origin win a game, he'll do a cartwheel for every game. Six it, cartwheels coming it, up. It will be video documented. Let's see if Origin can keep it up, though. Uh, they are only, they've only been able to eke out a 3,000 gold lead. SKT have come back from more this year. All right, Marin putting pressure in the top lane again. Niels, he ran down the mid lane. Now he has to go to red buff. He'll likely pick up that wave on top later. Just have to see if somebody gets picked off, because SKT have no hesitation whatsoever pulling the trigger. And they have a team composition that plays really well later in, in these team fights with that Azir. So Origin, they will need a flank. So look for Soas or maybe even Mithy or Amazing. Just somebody needs to get behind the SKT lineup, whether it's teleport or just simply walking there. That's the way OG want to play these fights. Yeah, remember we were talking about how well-rounded this SKT lineup is. They can continue to have Marn split push. They have the Azir to try and knock Soaz back out of the fight as oh. well. Heals his zone. He has to take some damage Has to well. burn rocket jump. Now he needs his team to peel him. Two dozen health on the dragon. Smite. Smite goes over to SK Telecom. They got it. A big ulti for Amazing. Wolf can always be peeled out. Nice dump over the wall. Heals his shield. That. 
great ceiling by Easy Hoot and a great smite by Banky. Yeah, it's so hard to chase into an Azir. Right now, they all lose momentum in terms of mid lane to Bang zoning them. Neil's again forced to rocket jump. Now Mithy's stuck on the other side. He is in flanking position. Should he go around? Expecke is on the bottom side of your screen too. Expecke. Nice bit of damage. Ulti pop. Easy Hoon down Rylai, to half HP. He's got the Rylai slow. So he slowed a few of them, but Banky and Co can still jump over walls. All they can do is make SKT go the wrong direction. Now, can Origin get enough down the mid lane? SKT will be late. Will the inhibitor turret take enough damage? Marin's already recalled. So as is up top lane already, but he has teleport. Yeah, the goal right now is not seeding that tower. It's just locking SKT in base and denying as much vision being placed as you can. Because of one minute from now, that Baron is going to spawn. Marin down to half. You can see Niels can kill that guy in about seven auto attacks. That doesn't take very long. Tristan has got plenty of attacks at this point in the game. Vision is a very key point right now as the map has gone dark with so much fighting and pushing minion waves here. Baron's up at 45 seconds. Of origin, Vision has timed out. Yeah. Soas has to be careful. He can't go for the next wave because he doesn't know where Marin is, so he's hopping around, protecting himself. Well, they can at least math out the movement speed of the champions. They can get to the top jungle pretty soon, though. No vision really for either team. It's SKT who does it first on this side of the map. Dragon's gone for a long time. It's just barren to play around. And keep track of the completed items because WoW Origin do have this fairly sizable gold lead for, for the mid game. Decent gold lead for the mid game. It's about the three item completions here on both Az Azir and Kalista. For SKT. The carry Amazing. is still very popular. Big chunk of damage. Amazing puts the ulti in for the shield and flashes over the wall. Almost dies and Easy Hoon gets it. Mithy shows up for some damage. Another knockup goes in towards Peke. Wolf taking a lot of damage. Flashes out. Big damage. Saved. And here comes Marin. He wants Soaz for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But the slicing maelstrom buying a lot of time. One for one in this fight. Mithy gets a knockup onto Bang. And look at the damage output. Bang, he's next. Here comes Niels. Nice heal. Summoner heal for Moon. Movement speed, but he can't land the attack. Not just yet. He gets it. He gets oh. the kill. Origin win the fight three to one. And Easy Zoon is still cornered in Origin territory. They haven't seen him exit though. But there's enough time to knock this one down. It's only Marin and Easy Hoon alive. Marin has home guard and he's recalling. But this turret will already go down. Now here comes Marin. Easy Hoon survives with the shield, with the turret for himself. Marin now in a 1v2. Mithy's got to be careful. He doesn't have ultimate, and Mark can take him down very quickly. Good Just damage done on Niels. Pops the W. Here comes Shen. Here's the ulti. Easy first pickup. Meanwhile, Amazing did pick off Easy Hoon. A one for one, and the inhib stayed alive. Yeah, second misclick on that pulverize from Mithy, showing some. Don't calm down yet. Star. Baron is active here, guys. <laughs> all right, Baron's active, guys. <laughs> he reposted it, though. He wouldn't have done anything with that pulverize at all. He should have headbutted, waited, seen it come out, gone for something else later. The Neil zoned out. He should have rocket jump. He does. Martin does not have the move speed to chase this. All four teleports are ready. There's True Sight on Baron right now, and SKT making their way. Most of the team is here. It's already pink warded. There is a green ward from Origin. They know of this. Amazing does not yet have ulti. Martin, Martin. has teleport, but can be stopped by Niels. Amazing in the wing, spotted by a pink ward. Neil should cancel that base from Marin and, and get it out of the equation. One well, the, uh, amazing, amazing. No flash. Amazing caught, amazing taunted, jumps over the wall from Bangi. Easy pickup here, but it will delay Baron, at least for now. But here comes Marin. He finds X Peke. A beautiful repose stops the headbutt, and Mithy was stunned, so he couldn't pulverize. Ults for himself now. Marin's still in the chase. Here comes some damage from Niels, but the support might be going down. It's a big chunk of oh. damage. Marin barely survives. And three more kills on so SKT. Now Soas is in. A beautiful top by Wolf. The re-engage. One kill picked up. Neil's again in the chase, but he can't find Marin. Jump over the wall by Wolf. Soas does not aggro Baron. He could have. He aimed for the Shen. Doesn't kill him. All right. Now you can calm down for a little bit. Right. What do you got, Crepo? <laughs> Bot lane's open, and Soas can TP. There's more you nah, can nah, do. No, no, no. We're calming down right now. All I right. just want to talk about how <laughs> this started. Really good vision control by SKT. Double pink ward. Forcing him to face check. Then the outplay. Flash at the right time. Easy Hoon still picks him up, but Niels in that fight, that was just phenomenal. He went left, right, up and down. He was not afraid to flash into the fight, dash into the fight to get a potential reset, and his team played around him. So really, really good. Yeah, just positioning. Up, down, left, right. Yeah. <laughs> no cheating in League of Legends. 
uh, half the two up. With all down. of that, though, remember the vision point that we keep bringing up. It's SKT constantly leaving wards deep on origin territory, and the true site around Baron still stands. But it's been SKT overextending and going for two greedy plays, though. They start Baron right Niels now. Niels is in base, though. This one's good, exactly. Niels is gone. Scuttler or not, it doesn't matter. So as looks for it, doesn't get it. Good run by Bang. SKT secure the Baron. They're down 1,500 gold right now. They can easily make this up. SKT have had some of the biggest Baron power plays of any team here at Worlds. Let's see if it will be as effective as the Origin power play. Yeah, it's six out of their nine games, they finished the game with the Baron buff still present. So they went from first Baron to smashing the Nexus. Well, yeah, they've the only, game, they they've only needed more yeah. than one Baron in one game here yeah. at Worlds. With which they smashed the Nexus with that second <laughs> buff, so. Well, Origin making a invasive play here into SKT territory. Amazing spotted by a ward, feels safe even without flash. Niels, of course, is right behind him. Going for a second BF sword at him, actually. Niels not going for Last Whisper. This dragon isn't that important. Nobody should lose their lives over it. Look at the flying still. Martin is immediately engaging. Niels, if he can not get out back. of here, collapse on the left the side. Here comes the rest of the team. Amazing could get jumped on. The re-engage towards dragon. Easy pickup. That's number three for SKT. Here comes Soaz. He's got a zone. His hourglass. He pops it. Death cap means plenty of damage, but here comes the re-engage. Nice ulti by Azir to buy some more time. SKT get out clean. If SKT hesitated any longer on the engage, they were about to be flying from both sides. So was at one, Mythi at the other, but just Origin really couldn't do. Yeah, close the pincer right there. If yeah. you can, if you can close that in time while SKT greets for the dragon, that could be a game-winning team fight. That was that one-second time difference when both pincers have to close at the same time. <laughs> Crabman Crepo. It's like Origin's trying to play Quap as a crab instead of as a distance runner. Let's, talk, let's look at their siege the right straight up mid here with Baron buff, with Azir. Secondary turret's very difficult to defend against Baron buff. One more turret shot. That minion's gonna be gone, but it doesn't matter. So much damage by SKT. Now they're back ahead in gold. Turret score still minus two, but they've got the turret damage and the movement speed dragon buffs that Origin does not have. Well, SKT is usually a team that has phenomenal vision control. They just need more pink wards. And then amazing, you just need to get behind enemy lines somehow, get unspotted, dodge those pink wards, because that is the factor that limits SKT in a lot of their movements, because they just simply don't know where amazing is. Pekka can at least get rid of Marin for a little while, and of course can match teleports. Neil's in the wing, sees Bangi's there. That being said, Amazing by himself flanking is almost nothing. It's, a, it's not that scary to SKT. Because their comp is so well-rounded, they have so many ways to protect Bang and Easy Hood. It has to be a double flank with Soaz, but Whoa. Soaz is going down to Marin. Zonia's pop up. Marin gets the easy shutdown. Doesn't have teleport, but doesn't matter. The solo kill is the important thing. A 4v4 in the bot lane. Meanwhile, top lane is getting decimated. Easy turret picked up. SKT are safe. Bot lane tier two, of course, also gonna be going down. So, once they had Baron, SKT have gotten a kill, a dragon, and three turrets. I'm looking for more. Yeah, you just, you're fine almost holding that 44 in the bottom, and then suddenly your top player drops 1v1 in the base. You just go in full recovery position, and, and you just try to lose maybe max one inhibitor. It's so incredibly hard to play against SKT with the Siege from Azir, the Split Push from Mar and they after Yora, and then have somebody drop. That's honestly a mistake from Soaz, just overextending. The multiple threats there is too much to deal with. There's nobody on Origin that can handle the Split Pushing Fiora at this point. They did thwart the inhibitor pressure, it's still alive. They dropped a the tier 3 tower there in the top lane, but if they can push out, get control of the map, maybe set up for a team fight again. Let's see what Soaz is doing. He's in his own base. Just Marin does so much damage. A perfect repost too. Just, yep. It's greedy, you can't... There's no reason to do that as Soas, because at best you're gonna poke a champion that has a lot of lifesteal built in already. So you, it's a play that can only make you lose. Kennen's all about the team fight here. Wants to get in the five on five for Origin and try and force something on the main group of SKT. But again, the Azir ultimate can knock him back out. Kalista can stall him. Even does so much damage now. Abyssal Scepter in Death Cap, the most recent addition. Void Staff probably next. And Hizuhuna is definitely a threat. 412 minion kills, highest in the game by a lot. So comfortable on that champion.
And again, the SKT vision is all throughout both quadrants of Origin's jungle, deep even inside the base. It's just becoming a race right now for either on one side, Niels with the help of Expected to burn through the front line and just get the resets going, and Easy Hume to just whack away with his soldiers and kill everybody else. And then eventually they'll meet, and Niels will need some big crits to really win that fight because Easy Hoon is so much talent right now. He's already Bengi, kind of cutting off one of the moves here. He's totally comfortable this far up in the lane. Plenty tanky on this Jarvan. The way that SKT push and prod you in all three lanes at once. Marin is just so good at staying safe in the side lane on Fiora. That's why he always ends up with his giant experience lead and gold lead over the enemy top laner. No hidden deep wards and no home guard teleport here on Soas. That is the counterplay to this repetitive sieging. You just put a ward behind them. Well, there, the there are out. a couple wards here if SKT push up all the way to the inhibitor turrets. On either mid or bottom side, he has options. But of course, Marin is not even against a turret here, and we saw him kill Soas inside the base earlier, so that is an easy lever for Marin to pull. And SKT have a very lopsided top side of the map. Silver line there for Origin is that, yes, Marin has this experience advantage. Hey, he capped out already, though. He's at 18, can't get any very higher. <laughs> They run, a, out sooner, they run really out of sooner. That's a really nice way to look too, at your no? opponent's <laughs> level 18. <laughs> oh dear. Ha! Ah, you capped yourself too early. I don't know if that that's really not, that's works. Not actually, that's not actually a good... I don't think peeking too really works in this case. But the game is stalled out once more. Baron has ended for a while. 40 seconds only, though. The vision war is very real right now. And of course, SKT, this is Dragon 4 for them. So they're, you know, six and a half minutes away from a potentially game-winning buff. They want to play it really slowly. Not that they have to, of course. If they clump up, though, there's so much AoE damage coming out of, you know, Soas on that cannon, the victor there for Expected. If any of them provide just enough damage to get a reset, and the explosive charge explodes in that fight too from Niels, that's an instant whitewash, instant ace. So, you have to be incredibly careful when they do group up to get these objectives. All right, Marin on the bottom side. He does have teleport, as do Peke and Soas. They're collapsing on him right now. Do want to? Origin are late on the party towards the Baron, though. Soas has to pop Zonius to get away. Oh, and ultimate. SKT and can take there's the, the push. Then. There's the knock. He gets two. Here's the teleport to save the team, but amazing. Taking so much damage. He's the first casualty. Bangi could be next. It will be a trade. Niels is okay, and he gets his knockup kind of canceled there. And now Wolf in the front lines, but it's already oh, one kill picked Soaz. up. Soaz can't find anyone to hit. Slowed down by the Azir wall, I believe. And Marin, meanwhile, hitting the base. Marin is hitting the base, so Peke must recall. But SKT could try to stop. They will not. It will be the inhibitor going down, and they're re-engaged towards Baron. Origin get neither going their way. Pulled apart here. Expert use of the more powerful split pusher there by SKT. At the same time, an incredibly unlucky flash hit from Soaz. Goes <laughs> over the wall, and he gets clipped by one of the remaining soldiers yeah. from Easy Hoon's ultimate, and he just... Uh, trying to get there? Nope. Couldn't get into that team fight with his ultimate, and at that point, yeah, Marn takes the inhib. And the Baron goes down. And it feels like part of this game is collapsing now for Origin. They had the chance of trying to surround Baron killing him. They have the chance of rushing down a very easy to kill Dragon 2 with a five item Tristana here. They choose none of them. They take lazy, slow recalls. SKT takes the entire map. And Origin are losing this game. Easy who fantastic ultimate though in that fight. Really good showing why Azir is considered such a good late game team fight champion. Completely pushes Peke. And Niels out of the fight with no way to re-engage because you can't jump over that wall because you'll just get bounced back again. And then SKT is in full control because again, they're split pushing 4 and 1. Marin so often peels off and does his own thing and tells his team to just stay quiet, you know, just do whatever you guys are doing. Don't concede that objective. Play with, with the necessary amount of respect and he takes down bottom in it. And don't forget how SKT built, even the very beginning of this game, with so much of Bangi's early attention up top, helping Marin get the lead on Soaz. Here, we, here comes the flank, though. This is their shot. One Marin shot. does have teleport. And the Azir turret is down. This is the chance for Origin to make a move. Amazing spotted on his flank. Bangi now to zone out Mithy. He's got to be careful. And this Alistair could get caught out. No one goes for the taunt. No one can deal with Marin, though. I mean, Soaz is up here looking at him, but he's still taking chunks out of the inhibitor. Finds a stun. Peke could land a slow. Another slow lands as Marin is at half HP. Now the push in. Whoa! Niels! Has to pop Quick Service Ash to remove the slow to run away. Mithy 
just trying to clear a few minions. They've got to get this Tristana to heal up quickly. Marin, meanwhile, has plenty of life still to get himself back to safety on this Fiora. So as losing health, mid lane under fire should be an easy pickup there. Blue Elixir even there for the more structure damage. Amazing gets caught, dies during the knockup. Bang is on a rampage. And inhibitor number two and inhibitor number three going to be going down. Wolf and Bangy in pursuit. Peke goes down. The fight resumes 3v5. Soaz can't even kill off Easy Hoon. He's got more shields than health bars. And everyone's dying. Neil's the only man alive. This will be the game. SK Telecom T1 are undefeated still in the world championship. And they're one game of three in the way to the finals. Undefeated still, but Origin made it further than any other team has here at World against SKT. A couple things still held true. SKT finished the game with a Baron buff, took them a couple more. This time, very long game, uh, 43 minutes, 29 seconds, more down like Origin's alley. So definitely gave SKT a run for their money. And this, this roster, I believe four out of five from uh, SKT T1S back in the day, actually ending up here looking poised yeah, to go undefeated at Worlds. Your cartwheel, cartwheeling days. Nope. <laughs> Not yet. Not Rebo. yet. <laughs> Not yet. Well, I think certainly the Origin put up, as you guys are mentioning, a much better fight than expected. Not only just the fact that the game went late, but the fact that Origin had a lead and a decent one early on into the game. This was not the origin we were seeing at the World Championship. The team that, despite being top four, was still averaging gold deficits in the first 25 minutes of the game, but this was the origin actually doing well early on, finding good matchups, making different plays in the lane swap. Oh, give the gold to Tristana for a pickaxe recall to get a good 2v2. Oh, you have to force bang out of lane early because the item disadvantage is so great. These are things that did matter, that did blow up part of the gold lead. The side lane pushing was good for origin. They also made their biggest swing in the mid game off of the Baron trade for Dragon, which they are probably not going to be able to get again. No. SKT, there are many things that uh, Koma will be talking to the players about after that game, and vision around the Baron post 20 minutes is probably going to be one of them. You could already see the shifted priority on that Baron vision after that first one went down. The the amount of picks yeah. that or that Origin almost walked into on SKT side, just trying to get that vision back, double pink ward there every every time, defended a lot more. SKT wasn't playing as one three one heavy as they usually have. They were actually playing a pretty heavy four one, just four members around that barrier area with Mar and continuously showing us why Fiora yep. is yeah becoming one of the best topics in the game right now. It's a champion we might see band away and.